So my name is Rolf. I am a teacher and co-founder of U-School. I'm also a full-stack developer and con consultant. I'm based in Oslo in Norway. This is my partner, Alex, who I run ViewSchool with. And at ViewSchool, we teach Vue.js and the ecosystem such as Nuxt and testing, there he is, uh, through video courses and articles. And I know that you've most likely seen this slide before, but once again, this is the amazing team behind our content, either as teachers, uh, reviewers, contributors, writers, and many of them have actually been here on this stage uh, so far, yesterday and today, and uh, I think Debbie is slated today. We also travel around and do in-house workshops if you're interested in training. So come see us if you're, if you're interested. And today I'm going to show you how we can create application shortcuts with a renderless event component. This is a fancy title, but what we're going to do is make keyboard shortcuts in our applications. I generally think we have too few shortcuts in our web apps. So um, global events, they are registered on the window object directly, contrary to if we have a click handler on a button. A renderless component doesn't have a template. It doesn't render it, it doesn't have it. It only manages its state and behavior. It's kind of like just the JavaScript part of the component. It's a fancy name, but it's not that fancy. We define our component renderless by giving it a render function that is either empty or return null. And by doing that, we tell Vue to not look for a template or a mounting point specified by the L option. So I want to create an, uh, a component that has an API like this. So we can give it an event, and once that event is fired, we can invoke a method. So let's create this component. We start off by making it renderless, by giving it a render function. We need a prop to receive the event. It's a string, it's required. And in the mounted lifecycle hook, I will register the event. Now we need a handle method, which will be, yeah, responsible for notifying the parent that, hey, this event happened. Uh, and as with the many things in life, we have to clean up after ourselves and in the destroyed lifecycle hook, we will remove the event listener we just added. And this is it. With these 20 lines of code, we can very easily react to events and make application shortcuts. Let me see. Where did it go? Sorry. So I have this um, <clears throat> companion repository that I will provide a link to in the end of the talk. Uh, you can navigate through the different examples with control and the keys, I mean the numbers. Uh, and for the first example, there will be some bright colors and animations, so if you're sensitive, please look away now. So it says that I can scroll here to see the rainbow, and when I scroll, I change the background color. Now, this isn't the most useful example, <laughs> but it is fun. And uh, it's pretty cool that we can um, assign the event uh, handler with the one line or with this component and also clean up after ourselves. And this means that if I go to the next um, example and I scroll, I'm not scrolling here, but imagine that I am. Uh, oh, I'm back. And for everyone that's sensitive, you can now look again. Imagine if I forgot to say that. Uh, yeah, so when we navigate the way, uh, we don't have the event listener registered anymore, so I can scroll without changing the background color. For this example, it says disconnect your internet to see what happened. I'm not going to do that on stage during a lightning talk, but I can give you a quick demonstration of how it would look like. So I'll turn off my internet, and we'll immediately see an, um, a warning that, oops, I lost the internet connection. And when I get back online, it goes away. This is very useful if you depend on autosave or if your application has autosave and you need, want to prevent the users from doing a lot of work and then losing it. And uh, yeah, so in the third example, I have a video and when I hit space, it plays. If I hit space again, it pauses. And notice here that I don't focus on the video um, element. Uh, it's a global shortcut. And like Dribbble uses this, if you hit L, you like the image, so you can use this to open menus and do uh, common actions in your web application. 
And in order to make this, I listen for the key up event, and once it's triggered, I invoke a toggle video method. In that method, I make sure that it was a space that was actually pressed, and then I conditionally play or pause the video depending on the current state. And here I'm also using a ref to easily access the DOM element, which is very handy. The problem with this code is that it doesn't feel like proper view code to me. I would much rather use the V on directive directly, and especially the shorthand. So I want to be able to go at key down dot space and then toggle the video. So let's see how we can do that. The difference, or the, the, the thing we need to change is the way we get our listeners and the handle method. Uh, and view, ooh, interesting, ta-da. So view um, gives, uh, since we can um, assign multiple listeners to any component, let me back up a bit. Uh, you can get all of the listeners in any instance through this dot dollar listeners. And since we can assign multiple listeners to any component, this is an, uh, uh, an object, and we can take the keys, and we then need to loop through them to get the event. I can then extract the event, I mean the handler, and then register the event exactly like we did in the previous version. Now to continue refactor our application, we can just get rid of the prop and the method because we don't need it anymore, because we get the handler from, uh, from the listener. And also we need to clean up after ourselves here, so I will, do, I will use the exact same approach, but instead of adding the event listener, I will remove the event listener. And there we go, this is the event listener 2.0. And this is the new API we can now use. So um, we can then say just key down dot space and then toggle the video. And notice here that we use the spa dot space key modifier and Vue.js takes care of this automatically for us, which is really neat so we don't have to deal with this dark magic. And uh, yeah, demo. So for this demo, imagine that you have a dashboard or you want to have a certain feature available at all times, but you don't want to spend um, your interface real estate to, to have it there. So you, I can hit Command F to open a search box. It automatically focuses. I can then type, hit Enter to search. Imagine that some results appear. You can navigate up and down. Maybe hit Enter to go into that one and hit Escape to close it. No, yes. Um, now, one thing to note here is that you should be very careful about overriding the default browser behavior as I do here. I like to do that in my own dashboards, but I hate that Stripe does it when I use their documentation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, think about that. And this is a pretty neat functionality. It's a very powerful. It allows us to show a lot of things or like bring a new tool in front of the user very fast. But the underlying view or the underlying code is very basic view stuff. So we have three event listeners and the two first, they essentially do the same. The meta key is uh, either command or the Windows key, depending on the operating system. Uh, control and escape is self-explanatory, I hope. And then we just conditionally render a div or a component, and that's all. So if you take this a few steps further, you can do something like this. Here I have a table. Uh, I can navigate up and down. I can use space to, to select the rows. I uh, then get an, a menu, an actions menu, where I can do some stuff. Or maybe, let's say, I think that we as developers, we tend to put too much information in tables. But we have JavaScript superpowers, so we can have like a hidden overlay that we can bring, bring into the front by hitting enter. And this way, we can have um, way more information at hand without uh, filling up the entire uh, table row. Here, I also have a menu. And there's a button here on the top right corner, and hit escape to bring it back. And of course, the state is preserved because this is just an overlay. Due to the nature of a lightning talk, I don't have the time to go into how I made that one. Uh, I don't use the component I showed you, but I use composition API, which is kind of exciting. So take a picture of this, look at the companion repository. I also have some resources there for the te uh, techniques I used. And I also want to let you know that there is a plugin uh, or a package called View Global Events that is made by Damien and Eduardo that does exactly what I show you here today. 
Uh, but they also cover some edge cases that I didn't show you. So check that out if you want to use it in production. I hope that uh, I was able to inspire you to go home and add a few shortcuts in your application. If you like what you heard here now uh, and want to learn more stuff like this, definitely you should check out View School. And make sure that you grab your one month free pass. Now, if you had trouble scanning this yesterday or any, at any time, you can also use the URL directly. Take a picture, but please don't share it online. And make sure that you register now or within the day. We will close the registration form afterwards. And if you haven't, uh, if you want to come talk to us, we have a booth outside here. You can have some stickers. We can talk about shortcuts, Vue.js, training, whatever you would like. Thank you.